Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at organic chemistry and we're going to be looking at the second section on polymers and the intermolecular forces and their reactivity. So by the end of this lesson you should be able to explain why addition polymers are unreactive and also you should be able to explain the nature of intermolecular forces between molecules of polyalkenes. So let's go and have a look. Here we have two examples then as we're talking about their reactivity we have here chloro ethene there's polychloroethene the monomer and here we've got polypropene now if we were to make these molecules and then go to throw them away they would remain around for a large number of years and the reason that they do not break down and they are unreactive is because of the strength of the carbon-carbon double bond. You'll notice that all of our addition polymers have a carbon-carbon single bond which is a strong bond and therefore it's very difficult to break this down. The only real way that you can do this easily is by combustion uh, with burning with oxygen and obviously you then have problems with carbon dioxide and the global warming effects. So really they're pretty much unreactive and this poses a problem because if we go to dispose of them they fill up landfill sites. So ideally, you want a polymer which can be broken down somehow. Unfortunately, addition polymers can't. So now we're going to look at how the intermolecular forces between polymers can affect the, the properties of that molecule. So we'll look over here on the left-hand side of this red box to start with. And the first thing to note is that most polymers, or a lot of polymers, are non-polar. What that means is that the forces between the molecules are dominated by van der Waals forces of attraction. And what that again means is that you've got the more electrons, the longer the molecule, the stronger the forces of attraction. Also, if we can get these molecules to be straighter, then the molecules can actually get closer so if it's longer we'll have more van der Waals interactions and if they're straighter the molecules are closer together and therefore both of these will allow for greater van der Waals forces of attraction and this will make the polymer more strong and rigid. And that's because our polymer chains can no longer slide over one another. Here we've got a diagram below which exemplifies that idea that here our molecules are very long and they're quite straight, so they're folding over, a bit like the game Snake you might have played, and therefore they're quite close together, and so the intermolecular forces of van der Waals can be as strong as possible. On the other side, if we've got a branched molecule and short chains, our intermolecular forces result in the polymer being relatively weak, and also flexible. Again, we may find some useful properties for that, and we're going to have a look at an example of that in just a moment with polychloroethene. So long and straight gives us strong and rigid. When it's branched and short, we end up with a weak and flexible polymer. We're going to look at how this altering of the chains can affect polyvinyl chloroethene and which is otherwise more commonly known as polychloroethene for us 
and they use what we call plasticizers. Now a plasticizer is a molecule like this red one. Imagine these black squiggly lines on my polymer chain. And the red spot is the plasticizer. Then what happens is the plasticizer is added to a molecule and sits between the chains. What that does is it causes the chains to be further apart. And also having weaker van der Waals forces of attraction. Now that can be quite useful if we have a look at the example of PVC. You might have heard of a UPVC and what that actually stands for is unplasticized polychloroethene and that is actually rigid and strong and it's often used for things like double glazing windows and doors and when it is unplasticized the molecules sit very close together can't slide over one another and therefore it's strong and rigid plasticized PVC on the other hand has these molecules which end up getting between the chains and the chains become further apart weaker van der Waals and so it becomes weaker and more flexible and this finds use in a lot of common day items such as cabling insulation around wires where perhaps you have to have uh, electrical wires which are cabled and obviously it needs to be flexible and move around but also floor tiling in building and clothing okay so that brings us to the end of the lesson. I'll have a quick summary now. Just to recap then, you should now be able to explain why addition polymers are unreactive and explain the nature of intermolecular forces between molecules of polyalkenes. See you again soon.